Hi, in this session I'm going to cover how to create a mailing label. So let's say for example you got a mailing label packet from the store and you wanted to, instead of handwriting out your your envelopes, you wanted to put it on a sticker make it look nice and neat. You can do that in Microsoft Word. So what you want to do is go into the Mailings tab. This is Microsoft Word 2010, so you go into the Mailings tab, go under the Create Grouping and click on the Labels, click on the Labels icon and we have our envelopes and labels windows coming up here and you just type in your address. I already have an address copied so I'm just going to paste it on here. And you can select the label that you want. So for example I have a shipping label called 18163. This is the product number from the label maker called Avery. If you had something different you just click here and you can select from the different ones here. Uh, see, For example they've got a whole bunch of them that are available. So I'm just going to stick with the one that I have here. Also, if you want to kind of get an idea of the details of that label, just click Details. Let me go back and see where my label is here. Click on Details, and it will show you the dimensions of that label. So, for example, if I had another, if I chose another one here, let's say I chose the shipping label here, the details is a little bit different. It's a little bit bigger here. But that's not the one I want. I want this one. And go ahead and click OK. And if I wanted to have the full page, I want to have that same address on all the labels. I can just cl click on that. If I wanted a single label, let's say for example I've already used the label sticker here and I wanted to use the one that's available here. That's on that first row here. I just click on the second column and it will print it there. So let me give show you an example of how that works. I'm going to print that. It's going to print out to a application I have already online here that I'm going to use to simulate how it's printing out on a hard copy. So if I go to zoom 50%. You'll see here that it printed out on the second column. So that's that feature that's available there. Whoops. So let's say that you had more than one address to put on the label. Let's say that you had you're sending out card invitations, you maybe you had a hundred invitations to send out. You don't want to do it one by one. You want to com combine you wouldn't want to do it one by one. What you want to do is you want to create a database or a list of records within Microsoft Excel and I'll show you here and once you created this little table you want to go ahead and link that up into Microsoft Word and create a mail merge and have it kind of automatically done not automatically but done a little bit quicker so you would have your basic fields here your first name last name address city state zip and you'd have your records going down the line how many records you have but I'm just going to use three for this example once you finish with that and saved it we go back into Microsoft Word and we want to start the mail merge. So once I click on the mail merge here, I would see some different options and I want to do labels. But if you just clicked on labels here, it's not very intuitive because you'd have to go through the second part where you select your recipients and go through your writing and inserting your fields and briefing your results and finishing the merge. There's actually a wizard down here that will help you go through it by step by step. So I'm going to click on that one. So once you click on that one, you're going to go through six steps. First is selecting the document type. Now we wanted a label, so I'm going to select on that and go to the second step. And what I want to do is select the labels that I have. So earlier I t had mentioned that I had 18163. That was the product number for Avery. You might have a different one from the uh, company that you bought it from. So there's this other list of companies there. You can just select that and try to find out which one you selected. Oops, it got changed here, so let me go ahead and just type in the number 181 it's Avery 1816 wait, 18163 alright, so I actually found that when I typed it in, in the keyboard, so I'm going to click OK oh, and then going back here, this is the same window so you can see the details too if you want to take a look at that, and then go ahead and cancel that, click OK Oops, uh, cancel. Label options. I think I 18163. Yes, that's fine then. So now we want to go to step three, where we're going to use the existing use an existing list that was list that was in Excel, and I'm going to go ahead and browse for that list. So I saved it over here. I'm just going to go to recent places. These are the recent files that I was working on. So I'll go to the mail label where I saved as un mail underscore label. Double click that. And it was in the records were in sheet one. So if I go back to Excel, you can see here 
I mean sheet one. So I'm going to select that and click OK. And also have, make sure this is checked off because the first row is the one with the column headers. So click on that and it's going to bring back those records and show you. So you can you can check off the ones that you want. So you can just check off the records that you don't want or if you want all the records in you just keep what it has here checked. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and you can see now we have these next records text that are enclosed in these chevrons. This first label here space is blank so this is the area where you would uh, arrange the labels how it look. So I'm going to go ahead and click next to go to step four and this is where we would want to kind of enter in what we want to look at. Now Word provides some already kind of predefined um, I can say a predefined label uh, grouping or formatted address here. So what I can use do is just use this address block because what it's going to do is it's going to pick up the first name, last name, address information and put it in this address block. So I'm going to click on that and you can see that this new window comes up and it gives you some idea of how you want to format it. Let's say that I just wanted to have, even though I had first name, last name, let's say I just wanted to have the first name. Like if I click on that, the last name would disappear. But I'm just going to take the defaults, the um, first name, last name. And it lets you preview the address information from your list. So if I click this arrow here for next, you can see that it picked up those three. So that works out quite well. One thing to note is that you, if your column headings in Excel did not really match what shows up in the address block, you can actually match it up to correct some problems. Let's say, for example, um, let me go and click on this. Let's say, for example, that you had called, instead of calling address one, you may, may have just called it place. So Word tries to be smart and tries to match it up to what they require for this address block to what you have in your Excel file. And so if you called it something else, not address one, and you called it place, you can actually have a selection where you can look and find where it is. Since I've matched it up kind of, kind of with what Microsoft Word is requiring, first name, last name, address one, it picked them up quite well here. So it picked up first name, last name, address one, city, state. So if I call that something different and it didn't really pick it up here in this window here, you can actually try to correct a problem with the match fields. So that's just a little tidbit for you to kind of look through and see if, you know, when you created your own Excel file if it matched or it didn't match. So let me go ahead and cancel out of that and click OK because I'm going to take what it provided because it matched up correctly. So now you can see that we have our we've laid out the label on our first label area here and now we have these next records. So what I want to do is so I want to make sure that this address block uh, gets copied to the next records here. So I'm going to go, what I'm going to do is click on this update all labels and you can see that now it's copied to the next records below. So after that, go into step 5, preview. So now it has actually printed it out on screen the way that I want to see it. And you can also edit your recipient list. And you can make changes here if you want to, but if you didn't, if you thought everything was fine, then you just keep it that way and just complete the merge. Now once you complete the merge, you can either print it or still edit it. But when you print it, you probably want to print it out on plain paper first before you actually print it out on your label paper because what happens is sometimes the settings on your printer may be a little bit different. And so you want to print it out on regular paper and put it right on top of or on the bottom of your label printer and shine it up to light and make sure that the names are within the confines or the margins of the sticker or the label sticker to make sure it is. If it's not, you may have to go through readjusting it, uh, either your printer or maybe adding a little space uh, before the words or not, or just moving them around. So this is kind of one of the little, little tip for you. But if everything matches up kind of nicely, you can just go ahead and start printing. You can just print it out. If I want to print all records here and click OK. It's going to print out to that application that I had earlier to simulate how it's printing it out. Let me go to there. And now it's printed it out. Let me go and zoom out. And see now it's printed out to the rows here and the columns here. So the, the label that I selected only has two columns. So it's a big label. It's a big shipping label. So that's how it works. So let me go back into Word here. And so once that's done, uh, you can either save this file maybe for the next time around or you just delete it and 
go through the printing, go through the mail merge process again. So once that's done, you can actually start to print it out on your mailing labels now. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.